Family, we're back again. YouTube, what's happening? Another installment in our FPV journey with the Zod HD Talon GT Rebel. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about this baby right here. You see it's in an Apache 3800 case. You know where that comes from. Harbor Freight. This is part of the ground station setup. We're going to talk about what I did to put this together, some of the materials I used, and pretty much everything that's in it and why it's there. But before we do any of that, we have to do that one thing we always do. So for all my subscribers, follow along. We got to roll that intro footage. Welcome back fam, welcome back to all my subscribers, to all those individuals who've been riding with us since the beginning. Hey, thank you for checking out and sticking with us for all this time. For all my new subscribers, equally as much, thank you to you. And for anyone who's on the fence, check us out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I post new videos and I do not flood your inbox with videos all the time. And like, share, and comment on my videos. Trust me, you'll like it. But let's, let's, let's move on past that and let's go and talk about the Apache 3800 case that I'm using as part of my ground station. So again, quick overview. What is a ground station in regards to FPV flying? I mentioned this in the previous video, so I'll give a, the, pretty much the same definition. A ground station is a means of monitoring your aircraft when or even if, now you, even if you're flying line of sight, you may want to use a ground station, but when you're flying long distance and you're not going to be doing line of sight, this ground station, no matter how you configure it, will allow you to monitor your aircraft. If you have cameras set up to do so, you can monitor the aircraft and know the orientation, even though you cannot see it line of sight with your very own eyes. That's the point and the main reason of a ground station. There's other things you can do with it, but that is the main point. Let me apologize now. Allergies are really kicking it, getting at me right now. So if you hear me sniffling, I apologize. It's not on purpose. So I chose the Apache 3800 hard case and I got it from Harbor Freight. And you know, it's you want to get a Pelican? You want to get any other brand? You want to get a Nano case? Get, get whatever case that you want. I chose the 3800 because of its size, fit, what I was going to put into this ground station. So let's talk about this Apache 3800 real quick and give a few of the specifications that goes along with it. So it is IP65 rated. It's watertight and dustproof. Listen to me. Watertight and dustproof. Does not mean waterproof. It's watertight probably along the same lines as water resistant. It will resist water ingressing into the box for a certain period of time and probably to a certain depth. So it's watertight and waterproof. It comes with a pick and pull foam insert so it's not laser cut because you're getting this to design the inside as you want. So it has pick and pull foam inserts so you can do that. It's got secure, strong and secure plastic molded latches to open and close. Let me flip that around. These latches right here, pretty simple to open and close. Doesn't take much. You can flip and get it open. All right, it also has a pressure relief valve, which is right up front by the handle, so you can release pressure. And so if you've had a Pelican before, or any other brand of a tar case like this, you, you're familiar with that. It's got pre-drilled holes plus metal uh, enclosures for, I shouldn't say enclosures, but protective pieces for padlocks. So if you need to secure your items, bam, you got the pre-drilled, get that in focus, pre-drilled holes right there on both sides. There's one there, one there. So you can put padlocks in. It's a polypropylene construction. It's not difficult to cut if you have the right tools, but you will probably melt more of the plastic than you will cut it, and that's why you would take your time. And here's the interior dimensions. All right, it's 14 and 7 eighths inches by 10 and 5 eighths inch by 6 and 1 eighths inch. That's the interior dimensions. That's going to come in handy when you're designing the interior of this box. So let's talk about some of the things that come with the box so you'll know what's inside of it before you get it. And it's pretty much standard across the board. You're going to get 
you know, the little sheet here that's going to tell you how to customize the foam inserts. If you've had a pick and pull before, you know how to do this. This is not rocket science. All right, speaking of the pick and pull foam, you get a full set. Now this has a hole cut in it because I had to use this as a template for mounting my monitor and other items. So you'll get a full solid piece of foam here. You get one of a thinner one, all right? You can see how thin that is in comparison. Then you'll get a thicker piece of foam and I'll bend it a little bit and maybe you can see how you have the little squares right there. That's your pick and pull foam, all right? So that's two pieces. We'll put that down right here. So then you'll also get Another pick and pull foam. So we're looking at two pieces of pick and pull foam, top and bottom. And then you also get a egg crate style piece of foam, which is typically in the top lid of the inside. So all this foam comes with the uh, hard case. Whether you use it or not is up to you, but you'll have that for the hard case. And speaking of all this that comes with it, the normal price is about $43 for this case, and if you know and have ever shopped at Harbor Freight, there's always 20% off coupons, and there's always sales running, so the price is going to fluctuate, and the price is going to change based off of the size. This is a 3800 It was about $43. They have smaller and bigger sizes, and they also have multiple colors. They have black. Uh, tan. I believe they have an olive drab type green and then what I consider this safety orange and I'll talk about why I got the safety orange instead of the black which is your traditional color. So let's take a look around the outside of it then we're going to pop the inside open and take a look at that. Stay tuned. Alright fam we're back we're going to take a look at the outside we're just going to do a little rotation here and go over the pieces. Alright we've already talked about the padlock pre-drilled holes. We've already talked about the pressure release valve. Here's your handle here. Nice handle. It, it, I mean, it's it's you know it's not like it's squishy or anything, but it's it's a good handle. It's sturdy, just like the rest of the box. All right, you have pretty much a full range of motion and movement until it gets to the top half of the box, and it doesn't go all the way flat. That's fine because when you store, you'll more likely store it down like that. Here are your latches. All right, pretty good, solid latches. Holds everything tight, and if you can see the gap right here, if you watch the gap when we close these latches. It pulls it in, you know, pretty much tight. There, there's differences in the gap along the way, but hey, that's what you expect to get for an item such as this at the price point that we get it at. Let's flip it around so you can take a look. You know, there's nothing here. There's the side. No big deal. Here's the rear. As you can see in the rear, I've done some cutouts and labeled them for my FPV purposes. We'll talk about the pepper box in another video, but these are AV outs, all right? This is the video, or actually AV video in, not out, I'm sorry, in from the pepper box receiver. And then over here we have the power, which I have an XT60 that I cut out and mounted here. This will power the pepper box uh, and, and draw power from the uh, 4S or 3S or whatever LiPo battery or whatever. You can use a 12 volt uh, sealed lead acid battery if you choose to power your system. I chose to use LiPos. Got a couple of these SMC's. This happens to be a 5200 milliamp 3S uh, battery. It's 11.1 volts. You know, this is a basically a 12, 12 volt system. This will power your 12 volts right here. So this is what I use. You can use any other type you want, any other brand. It's up to you what you want to use. And then of course, I've got the XT60 connector on there. All right, and here's the other side. Nothing there. Here's your bottom. You know, I have some little molded feet in there. No big, nothing fancy. This doesn't need to be fancy at all. So now let's pop the inside and talk about what I've done and why I use the components that I've used for this particular box. Let's drop the table down some. All right, let's pop it open. And we're gonna to have to change angles a little bit. Drop the table some more. And then we're gonna start at the top. And let's move in a little bit. Here we go. So, in the top half of this box, now before we go into the components, you'll see around the edges in this little channel here is a rubber gasket that'll help with that water uh, tight seal. Remember, water tight, not waterproof or water resistant, and the dust proofness of the case when it's closed. So that'll help with that. So up top, this is what I've done up top. I've took a piece of foam. Now, the piece of foam that I used is I uh, got this at Lowe's. It's called a Green Guard Project Panel. 
and it's a you know it's a dense piece of foam. It's roughly uh, let's see about one inch thick, and this foam is the backing of the top piece right here. So I used the, the uh, pull, pick and pull foam that came with the box to do a template. Then I took that template, transferred it over to a piece of cardboard, which everyone who buys anything online, you've got plenty of cardboard boxes lying around. And when I did that, I just transferred that template over to this piece of foam, cut it out, and I apologize for the glare, cut out the dimensions I need to match the holes for the different components I have. And then on top of that, because it was a little rough from handling it during the times when I was getting all the cuts and dimensions as right as I can. You can see there's little differences here in the gap and it doesn't look that perfect, but I'm not doing this for anyone else but me. This is the way I want it. And then I took right here, this is just a piece of, let me see if I can get the label in the frame. I probably won't be able to. So this is a piece of uh, Elmer's foam board. I got a 20 by 30 by 3 16 3 16th of an inch white foam board. And what this foam board did was it helped smooth out and give the appearance of a smoother finish for the top piece. And then on top of that, I used a piece of 3M matte black vinyl wrap. Laid it on it. Of course, I glued the foam board down to the actual foam core that I used. You know, So this foam core was glued down and I used some spray adhesive, sprayed it. Put the foam board on top, and then I wrapped the entire thing in 3M uh, vinyl, matte black vinyl. That's what the black and orange looks good together in my opinion. Now, moving on to the components that I chose. So I have two things, actually three things up top of importance. I have a 10.1 inch LCD monitor, just any brand you buy. I bought this highway off of uh, Amazon, 10.1 inches. I also have a DVR down here, which is, let me get that into the shot a little bit better. So I have a DVR at the bottom with the screen. This is a, a Lumineer DX600 DVR. And this is for, re, uh, like I said before, redundant system to record my OSD footage. Okay, and then up top I have a voltmeter or a volt reader so I can monitor the voltage that the DVR is receiving. Before I mention that this DVR runs off of five volts. So in the interior, in the guts of this system, I have a UBEC that stops, excuse me, steps the voltage down from 12 volts to five volts. And I have the voltage meter here so I can monitor and ensure that this is receiving five volts. The monitor receives and works off of 12 volts. So this is what the system is powered on is 12 volts. So I know this is gonna get 12 and I have another voltmeter at the bottom that shows me the voltage that's coming in. So no need to have another meter up here. I could have moved my voltmeter to the bottom, but I wanted it up top, personal preference. Behind all this is the wiring. So some wiring I had to cut and solder, uh, barrel connectors on, I had to extend, so on and so forth, tap into, and all that's running behind this right here. There's plenty of room as far as the depth of this top lid. And then I've got the wires running out through this wire loom at the bottom. And anything that doesn't, I'm not getting a good close up on, I'm gonna take some B-roll and I'll probably lay that over as I'm doing it. Probably already have, so if I have, hey, that's good. If not, I apologize, I'll start doing that now. So I've got a little rubber grommet here. All the wiring runs down through this wire loom into another grommet into the bottom, which I'll we'll sh we'll show you in a second. And this is just the top half of this ground station. So I'll see the footage from my FPV aircraft, and it doesn't make a difference which aircraft it is. Because of how the signal is received, I can have multiple aircrafts. All I need is one ground station to receive those signals. I'll see the OSD footage here, which will have the HUD, and all my parameters as far as milliamp hours, hours used on the battery, the direction of the plane, the attitude of the plane, the altitude of the plane, the speed of the plane, it'll all be shown here, as well as down here on the DVR. The only difference is, besides the, the, the dimensions, you know, one's bigger, one's smaller, this DVR will record the OSD, OSD footage. On the aircraft, I'll have a GoPro which is going to be recording the clean footage. So remember I said before I have the Runcam 2 is my OSD camera on the Zide Talon GT Rebel and my GoPro Hero 7 Black 
is going to record the clean footage also on the Talon GT Rebel. The only difference is the only signal that's coming back to the ground station through the pepper box, again, I'll do a video on the pepper box next, will be the signal that you will see recording on the DVR. The signal, the recording from the GoPro Hero does not come back because it's recording internally on its own SD card. So before we're finished, I'll, I will power all this up so you can see what things will look like. I'll hook up the aircraft so that it's plugged into the pepper box, run the pepper box into here, run the power, and you'll see how everything works. So that is the top half. So this is my viewing portion. You can do this layout any way you want, and there's plenty of videos, plenty of other creators and makers on YouTube who have their ground stations, and they're set up differently. Some have their all-in-one ground station, all mounted to the tripod. Some have a smaller ground station, which is just a video screen mounted to their transmitter. You can do this any way you choose. This is just my design and how I wanted to have my ground station set up. So let's move on to the bottom half of the box and take a look at what I have laid out down here. Now we're taking a look at the bottom half of the case. This is a uh, another piece of material that I have down here. In this case, I used plywood. Thin sheet of plywood, you can buy them at Lowe's, you can buy them at Home Depot, you can buy it at any one of your hardware stores. Uh, you could have some laying around. It makes no difference. You could use foam board. You don't have to use plywood. You can use that same type of foam that I use for this top half. Totally up to you. But I chose to use plywood. Again, did all my template cuts on cardboard and then transfer that over to the plywood, then cut everything out, and then I wrapped everything in 3M matte black vinyl. So, you can see here, for number one, we'll start on this side. This is the power in that will power up the entire system. And this is powered by an XT60, and I have it labeled with XT60 right here. So you simply take your battery of your choice, all right? In, case, in this case, I'm using the SMC battery, and then you just plug it in. We'll plug that in in a second. Easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezing. I also have a 3D printed plate here that I printed up myself and I use some um, artist crayons, I would say, for, the, for, for lack of better um, terminology, to color in all the different items that is on the plate. So this is my master voltage right here, so I have the master voltage color, colored in and I have a two switch setup, which is a redundant setup. You don't have to do two switch, you can run everything off of one switch. I just like the idea of having a master switch which will allow power to feed into the system. All right, Hit the master switch, power will feed into the system. And then for the secondary switch, this is where I have the immersion RC power box which sends out all the power to the different peripherals, and until I hit that, nothing comes on. So those are just the switches, and then of course I have right here, a, I, I'm, I'm down with the Rebel, you know, the Galactic Empire, so I have the Galactic Empire symbol right here. Had that laying around, just something I chose to put in there, you don't have to use that for yours. I'm going to show you the bottom half, what I have up under here, more so than I do the top half. And let me reiterate, or just say one thing, these pieces are press fit into the dimensions of the inside of this box. There are no, um, there are no um, brackets or, or Velcro or standoffs. And the reason why I chose press fitting was this. Less work I had to do, number one. Number two, it's easier to remove so I don't have to unscrew any screws. And number three, I wanted to be able to, if I wanted to reconfigure this box, not to be limited to the dimensions that I've already set with brackets. So it just makes it simpler for me. And here's the other thing. When I cut this, I cut it so it would press fit and sit within this box with friction because there's not going to be a lot of jostling of this box. And there's a small accidental gap along this side of the panel to which I use a little Allen key, slide it down and in, turn, and then I pull up on it and that allows me to pull this plate out, which I'll do now. So I only have so much room. So this is what the bottom of this box looks like. Let me tape that back. So you can see at the bottom I have all my wiring for the switches. Switch wiring, totally different video, totally, totally different subject. I won't get into it. It's not hard to do, okay? And then if you see down here, let me pick this up without breaking anything. I have a couple boxes sitting in the bottom. 
Okay, on my left, your right, there's a black and red box. That's the Immersion RC Power Box. And this distributes all the power to the different components that I have in the box. So it takes the, the 12 volts in, and then it moves that power between the Eagle Eyes, which is my diversity system. It moves that power to out to the Pepper Box. It moves the power to the DVR and to the monitor, all from one box. So it cleans up everything and you have one center, one source of power management. Again, the Immersion RC Power Box. That's what that is down there. The black and red box that you see there has one side for AV, which I don't need to use AV. And the other side where you see the barrel connectors sticking out of, that's for the power distribution, the power management. So that makes everything simple. Next to that right here is the Eagle Tree Eagle Eyes Diversity a Video Management System. All right, again, I'm so upset that Eagle Tree is going out of business, but this product right here is another simple time saver. Everything's pre-labeled, it's protected, and all this does is take in your audio and video signals, if you choose to do both, and then it shoots it out to all the receiving items that you have. So the video coming in from the pepper box, which the, you know, the antenna system, the video comes into the box in here, and there's another end, excuse me, these are your two ends right here. I have one yellow and one white, doesn't make a difference. The signal is gonna travel along the line, so it doesn't make a difference which color cable that you use. But one coming in for both the, I have two antennas on the pepper box, and then that distributes, the box it is, distributes everything out, so you have one, two, three, it has four outs, so it will send signal out to four different items. That's why I chose this Eagle Tree Eagle Eye system. It's perfect for that, and everything is mounted with Velcro, so it's not permanent. But I do have it affixed so it doesn't move around. Velcro is the uh, mounting uh, item of choice that I use because, again, it's simple. I can remove, replace, reposition at any time. So let me see if I can get a close-up. I probably won't, but you can see over on my left, excuse, yeah, your right, you'll see an AV cable coming in right here. All right, this AV cable coming in is right here for my Fat Shark video out cables. It's coming into the box, but the signal is actually going out to the Fat Shark repeater that I'll show you in a second that I attached to the box so that when I use my goggles, I'll be able to see the feed as well as show the feed on the monitor. Towards the back of the box, let me see if I can get that in frame. Hopefully you can see this because I'm losing my video signal. But at the back of the box, you know what, let me flip it around. Let me show you that part first. We saw this at the beginning. At the back of the box, right here, you see where it says Pepper Box, right here. AV1 and AV2. So these are the signals coming in from the Pepper Box from the long range antennas into the box and those feed into the Eagle Eyes, uh, Eagle Tree Systems Eagle Eye, it's a distribution centered, and it's got the diversity in it. So it, the diversity means it's gonna pick whichever signal is best. So you could have a weak signal coming in on AV1, and AV2 has the better signal, then it'll use AV2 signal to place the video on the monitor and send it out to any other item that you have for viewing, okay? So that's why I have two. So I have two antennas on the pepper box. Then next to that, I have the out, this is the out, so the, remember the Immersion RC power box? This is plugged into the power box, soldered up, soldered up everything myself. We used an XT60. I'll plug in another XT60 male into this female, which is gonna to run to the pepper box. That'll send power to the pepper box. But again, we'll talk about that in another video. So all this is under this, and I, you know, it's, it's plywood, you can see here, just a piece of plywood. Nothing fancy. Again, I've got the power in from that I'm going to use my LiPo for, it, which is right here. This XT60 comes in to the switches, and the switches are wired to the Immersion RC power box. And when I flip the switches, all the power runs to where it's supposed to be, nice and neat. Don't have to worry about a lot of wire management. You can have as much or as little as you want, but this will handle everything for the sending the power, the, you know, the voltage out, 
and then this box handles everything as far as taking in the video signal, translating it, and then shooting out to anything that you have hooked up to it. So this is, again, press fit. I just slide it right on, press it down, good to go. So that is the interior of the okay. pepper box. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hook up the aircraft and the pepper box, excuse me, yes, the aircraft and the pepper box to this ground station. So I'll show you a little video snippet of how things will look and then how it works. I have everything, let's unplug that real quick. Everything is hooked up, transmitters turned on, the pepper box is wired into the ground station and I have the aircraft pointed in another room so I can show you this video signal feeding from it to the pepper box uh, pointing at the Aero Scout S. So I'm going to go ahead and power everything up. So first off we're going to take our pow uh, power source which in this case is a 5200 milliamp hour SMC uh, 4S, excuse me, 3S LiPo battery. We're going to plug her in right here to the XT60. And when I do that you will see, I'll, let me tip this up some, down at the bottom it shows my voltage. So I know this battery is right now putting out 12.2 volts before I cut anything on. So my battery is good. Alright, so let's unplug that so you can see it actually going in there. And there we go, 12.2 volts. Next up, we're going to go to our switch, which I have two switches here. You can't really see it, but one's labeled Master and the other one is labeled Immersion RC Power Box. Here's my Master switch. I'm going to flip it and you'll see the green light come on, but nothing else is going to come on. So let's... One, two. Master switch is armed. That means the box is armed now. It's ready to receive the next command. Now when I put on the Immersion RC Power Box, remember that little black and red box that's in the bottom here, that distributes the power out to all the peripherals. So, and I apologize if the lighting is bad because the glare was going to get in the way from the video, so I had to cut my lighting back a bit. Then we're going to flip this switch here, and you should hear a beep, and that beep is the Immersion RC Power Box saying, I'm receiving power, now I'm sending it out. Here we go. Five volts to the DVR, screen pops up, and then we have a video signal coming in right now. And the video signal right now, it's dark because I cut the light out in the other room. I did that on purpose. So you can actually see it come on. Let me cut the DVR on. The DVR has to be cut on and off every time. It does not remain on and keep the power. So now I've got everything set up. You can see the HUD here. All right, you can see the HUD. And let me go ahead and cut the aircraft on, or the light on, walking into the other room. All right, in the other room now, we're going to flip the switch and you should see the Aero Scout S come into view. And that is a feed of what the front of the aircraft sees and returns back to the ground station. It's a really good picture, but remember, your video quality the picture quality is going to depend on your antenna and the distance between the pepper box and the aircraft and any obstructions in between. Right now, I'm very close. There are no obstructions in between. I've got the pepper box pointed directly at the aircraft. The video signal is going to be excellent. Now I'm going to walk into the other room and move the aircraft and you'll see that this is not a recorded image. This is actually a video feed from the aircraft and you can see at the bottom Barely, because it's a smaller screen, that's the same picture, but that is the footage from the DVR, and that's what we'll record. So, let me move into the other room, move the aircraft. So I'm going to move the aircraft around, and you should see the video feed will change. You also see the HUD moving. And that is showing the attitude of the aircraft. And you'll know everything is working. So there's your video feed, folks. And I'm going to move the aircraft a little bit more. There's the Aero Scout S sitting up on his perch, ready for the next flight. And then as a little further proof, I'm going to put my hand into the shot. The old peace sign. All right. Pop the top on the Aero Scout S. This is me. 
It's in a separate room. Everything powered up, good to go. There should be a little bit of interference, possibly now, because I'm standing in between the pepper box and the aircraft. And now I'm back in the frame. So that's it, folks. That's the setup. That is what a ground station consists of. Primarily, all you need are a few items. You need a monitor of some sort, a means of recording that information, and an antenna. You don't have to buy a box like this. You can run this all off of a tripod. And when I show you the pepper box in another video, you'll see how it's set up on the tripod. So again, all you need is a few items. You need some sort of um, means to receive the signal. So you need a receiver. You need one or more antennas. You need some source of monitoring. And you also need some source of video. You know, not, not video, of power, okay, and a means to distribute the video. You have to have a source of power. Without power, none of this will work. All right, you can go as expensive or as cheap as you want. It's up to you. Your setup doesn't have to be elaborate. This is not really a nice setup. This is a pretty good setup. There's setups out here way better than this. Way better. But, again, it's up to you how you design and make your ground station. Totally up to you. So that's it outside of one other thing, and I do have a, a repeater on here for my pep or my excuse me, fat shark goggles. And all that is is another antenna. Okay. This is oh, and by the way, there's two types of antennas without me getting too deep into it. You'll see an RHCP and an LHCP. That stands for either right hand circular polarized or left hand circular polarized. Uh, the guys that I fly with, or I'm going to start flying with, you know, I haven't went FPV with them yet, they have RHCP, right-hand circular polarized antennas. I went with a left-hand circular polarized antenna, which means there will be less interference between them and me when we're flying around the same time and in close proximity. I'm not going to give you the dirty details on, the, on why one's left, one's right, but just understand that there is and do your research and you'll figure out if you're flying with a group, and if the majority of them are using RHCP antennas, use an LHCP antenna. Your signal is not going to be any different. It's just a matter of any interference. So this right here will simply fit, and this is going to be, let me close this a little bit. There's a spot here where I just Velcro this to the ground station, and then I plug in on the side down here. That's where that that signal is going to go out to from the uh, Eagle Eyes, Eagle Tree Eagle Eyes uh, distribution box and it'll send the signal that you see on the monitor here will go into my Fat Shark goggles. So if I want to fly with the goggles on, put the goggles on, I see the same thing. Now just to show you real quick on the switches, so again we have the master and the immersion. If I want to shut the whole system down, just kill it, hit the master, everything is dead. No power, anywhere but I still see that I, my battery is still putting out 12.2 volts the signal is still being shot to anything that will receive that signal but I'm not going to pick it up as far as showing the visuals because I've killed the power so if I cut it back on just with the master switch I've left the immersion on you should hear the beep there it is monitor will pop up next DVR is still in standby mode because I have to manually cut it on. That's why I have it sitting out a little bit from the frame. I'll do that now. Hold the switch. Power's up. Luminaire DX600. Now I'm showing this is my recording screen. This is my monitor screen. And then again, 4.99 volts going to the DVR, which lets me know. And the DVR is on. I'm not going to fry anything. I can shut down the immersion but still have power to the system. As you can see, the system still is powered. Cut the immersion back on, there's the beep. Five volts, when the DVR comes on, that should drop down. There it is, because I'm asking for power now. And there we have it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The only thing I'll say, the only caveat to this is very simple, and I, I say this with a lot of things in regards to these builds. Take your time. Plan out what you want to do, lay it out, use cardboard, very cheap, medium, and if you bought any items online, you've got plenty of cardboard boxes lying around. Put it onto cardboard, cut and trace it out, fit it into the box, see how it looks, imagine things before you permanently place them, then go from there. This whole build took me 
a few weeks to do because I was taking my time, not only acquiring the products that I needed, the devices, but taking my time, thinking everything out, drawing out the electrical schematic in my own terms. I'm not no electrician, but drawing all that out, making sure it's feasible, testing it inside and outside of the box, and then putting it all together, and then everything went together smoothly. A few things I added at the end that I didn't think of, but it worked. So this is it. This is the ground station, folks. We've come to the end of another video, and I have to thank you again, as always, for checking us out, for sticking around, and for putting your trust in our video content that you will watch and continue to watch our videos. Please subscribe, leave a comment, like the channel. Check out my previous videos for the upcoming free giveaway. Today is the 24th of September, only a few more days left in the month. If you've commented on the particular video that I've talked about, I'll leave a, a link up to the video I'm speaking of. If you commented on that video and you're subscribed, you're automatically entered to win that free prize, that free thing we're giving away. Check it out. But as always, folks, again, fam, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. We hope you come back. I am Jay of Jay Sinister Productions, exiting stage left. Jay Sinister Productions. Jason Sinister Productions. <laughs>